everybody. Welcome back to another weekly market review for F45 Trading. Uh, this week we are discussing June 8th to the 12th. So uh, right away I'm going to get into this here and bring up the economic calendar to look at quickly. Uh, not much going on on Mondays. We've got some Euro uh, news coming out. Uh, watch out for this news event here. Uh, this may spike the Euro market a little bit. Uh, that's early New York Open. Uh, and then nothing on Tuesday to speak of for any of the major pairs that I'm watching. Uh, obviously, that's um, uh, that's all of these major pairs that I'm watching here. I am not doing anything for the Swiss, uh, the yen, or the uh, uh, the kiwi or anything like that. So uh, if you guys trade those pairs, you'll have to just make sure that you bring that up on your own chart and keep an eye on what's going on on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, uh, that's when some more of the fireworks sort of happen. We've got a lot of U.S. dollar news. We've got CPI, core CPI, uh, FOMC. We've got uh, the FOMC statement, federal funds rate, which they're not predicting any change, and then FOMC press conference. So we're probably going to see a little bit of movement in the charts on Wednesday. Now, uh, I'll talk about that here in a second, but uh, the dollar's definitely, the U.S. dollar is going to get affected by that. Uh, and then Thursday going in, we've got Eurogroup meetings all day long. And a couple of medium impact core PPI uh, and unemployment claims for the U.S. dollar. And if you look over here, they're forecasting lower numbers. Uh, U.S. is finally starting to come back out of the uh, lockdown as most other countries around the globe are. So we're going to start seeing improving numbers here. <clears throat> and then Friday, we've got GDP numbers and manufacturing production for uh, the uh, GBP. And then we've got U.S. dollar prelim uh, UIM consumer sentiment numbers out. So um, forecast a little bit higher than last week. So uh, anyway, um, nothing too major except for Wednesday, like I say. Keep an eye on Wednesday because that will definitely affect a few pairs going forward. Now, let's get into this here quickly. So... Um, U.S. dollar uh, hit the target that I was looking for last week. And again, from last Sunday's recording on, I believe that was June 1st. Uh, well, Sunday, May 31st, Monday, June 1st, depending on when you watch it. Uh, I said I wanted to see price uh, fall lower on U.S. dollar, and that's exactly what we got. Uh, I was calling this uh, mid-96 level, and that was the level right here. The highs of this consolidation area was what I was looking at. So check uh, that area is done and now we're starting to see a little bit of hesitation we saw friday go a little bit deeper uh, than thursday but all in all we had an update and that's basically just everybody taking profits on friday uh, they are um, pretty much closing their positions from this big drop in dollar and uh, going square for the weekend that's why you see this little up kind of here now what do we do this week here i'd like to see them give a little bit of pullback uh, we obviously had uh, the past one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days straight down, nine days down if you include uh, the lower wicks of the Friday's uh, trading range. Uh, so big down movement on the U.S. dollar. And I'd like to see a little bit of movement higher here uh, coming into this week. Now that could change Wednesday. So that's why I brought Wednesday up. Uh, keep in mind uh, one more time, right, we've got the... Um, uh, this going on here, all the uh, FOMC statements going on, on on Wednesday. So we could easily see price move up Monday, Tuesday, uh, and into Wednesday, into here, and then Thursday we could see it continue to push lower. Uh, or the alternative, and that's why I have this number down here at uh, 95.70, we could see price roll over, come down here by Wednesday, and then possibly see a reversal. Uh, <clears throat> but either way, uh, I am looking for Wednesday to um, either add fuel to the fire as to, you know, whatever direct. Like, let's say, for example, we see Monday, Tuesday come up, um, even Monday, and then price starts to roll over and price starts heading down, you know, Tuesday. I would expect Wednesday to probably accelerate price down into this level, maybe even taking out this low, uh, if that's a thing. But what I'd really honestly like to see is this. I'd like to see price run back up into here retest back off of these lows here what we do from there i don't know if we start rolling over i don't think so um and i, I believe <clears throat> we're seeing this move down here to run these stops and i've said this before i'm looking up here uh as the u.s economy does start to come back online we're probably going to see some more bullish 
um, movement on the dollar. You know, I could be wrong on that. And if I'm wrong on that, then we're going to see price come down below 95.70. It's going to be that easy. It's not too far away from, it's a little over a dollar, uh, you know, a dollar ten from current location. So uh, if we do see this price give out, then I'll be looking for this low here and we'll see bullish continuation Wednesday and, you know, Thursday, Friday, we'll probably be down. Okay. But <clears throat> I'd like to see, I like how we came in, slammed into this area here that I was looking at and we, 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 Failed to go any lower on Thursday, failed to go lower on Friday, and now Monday, uh, well, at the time of this uh, recording, Sunday, markets are open. Uh, we can start to see, you know, a little bit of a doji forming. So <clears throat> I'd like to see, personally, them come up to here. Uh, but give it a day or so, and, um, you know, hopefully by Tuesday, London or New York open, we'll have a better idea on the range. Uh, I'm anticipating a little bit higher movement. I think, to be honest with you, if we give up Fridays, uh, low, then we're just going to see price accelerate to the downside. So that'll be your trigger. If we give up these lows here, uh, expect lower prices on US dollar. But I believe, you know, if, I think if we give up Friday's high um, and start trading into this range in here, uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking just a touch off of Wednesday's low. You can see Wednesday's low came in at 97.15. Uh, we need to see price go above 97.15. So that's this area right here. If we start trading above that, then I think we're going to see a little bit uh, deeper of a pullback on U.S. dollar, possibly a run higher, and at least until Wednesday, and then we'll see what Wednesday gives us, okay? So that's kind of it for now on U.S. dollar. I'm going to burn through these as well, too. Um, US, uh, Euro USD, same thing, big movement upwards. This was a huge move, by the way, too. This was a 500 pip uh, to the upside move. So I hope you guys got a lot of this move here. Uh, I know our members got lots of this and on the uh, next pair that I'm going to uh, do some analysis on uh, the cable. So great movement last week. And again, my target was this high here and it got that in stunning fashion. Look at last Thursday, big, big update last Thursday. Very surprising that we actually got that big of an update. 160 pips uh, and then Friday went even higher and then closed lower. Uh, as I said, a little bit of profit taking there. Slammed right up back into the uh, bottom of that candle there. And now we're starting to see price fall off a little bit. So this is sort of another reason looking at this chart here, why I'd be looking for a little bit of rollover. I think they're going to come back lower uh, on Euro USD, and it, which could push US dollar higher. Um, but I, I don't know how low we're going to go. Are we going to fall off and go all the way back down here? You know, time will tell. I want to see where we're trading by Wednesday, uh, midweek here by that FOMC news. If we're, um, you know, Wednesday, if we're all the way like down here and we've come under this area uh, and then Wednesday could offer a price to roll down at least into these highs here. So I might be looking for that. Uh, but for now, I'm going to say I'd like to see price at least return back to this area in here. And if we go lower than that, then we can reassess. So, but I do like what I see here. I like how price slammed up into this low um, once, twice. And so far, we put a big down candle in on Friday. I'd like to see a couple of down candles Monday and Tuesday. Uh, and then we'll see sort of where we're at from there. So uh, going into cable, again, same thing. Hit the area that we were looking for. I was looking for a run above these highs here. I wasn't sure if we were going to slam back up into this level here um, towards the end of the week, but we certainly got that. Uh, just touched perfectly in there. Now, cable is looking a little more bullish than what EURUSD is looking at the current moment. <clears throat> so we'll see if this changes. As you can see, uh, cable gave us a big up close on Friday, whereas Euro USD did not. It gave us a down close candle, and Euro you can see pushed straight up in there. So uh, I, I I do like to see this now. What I don't want to see is uh, them trade price back down through here. If this is going to remain bullish, I'd like them to stay above this area. Uh, but if we start climbing down, um, you know, failing to go much higher than here, we we could certainly see a sweep above. Friday's high and price come, you know, more so uh, into these lows here, the body lows of those candles. We could see that uh, if we do see rejection at that level, then I want to see this be sort of the level that they resist price and we see a little bit of support here and then possibly see a bounce. <coughs> if not, <coughs> pardon me, if, if we do see price trade through here, uh, then I think we're going to probably rebalance back at the at this consolidation level in here and possibly trade down to 123.60s, uh, you know, maybe high 123.80s, uh, somewhere in and around there. I'd be watching for that if we trade through here. So I'm watching price to set up uh, Monday and Tuesday uh, and see where we are, like I say, going into London or New York Open on Tuesday. 
and then see where we're at. But I, I would be expecting, I, I like this. This is very, very bullish. I like to see higher prices. Um, we didn't come back down and go as low as I thought we were going to go a couple of weeks ago. So that's a very, very bullish sign. So, you know, it's quite possible that we could even get all the way above these old highs out here that I was looking at months ago uh, as a possible target if we start seeing some real acceleration. Uh, but just be careful on it. Uh, they could come back down and rebalance even at the highs of these old candles in here from earlier uh, mid-range last week. That could certainly be an area that we're looking at as well too at 126, you know, 25, 126, 30, uh, somewhere in around there. I'll leave it at 126, 30 just for argument's sakes. But keep an eye on that level there. If we go much lower than that, it's not too hopeful. We'll probably see price rebalance here. Uh, but I'd like to see them really push price up on a cable. So we'll see what they give us. A Euro GBP would obviously be the uh, sort of telling hand uh, to forecast that move. If we do get a higher price on GBP USD, then we should see lower prices on Euro GBP. Uh, so keep an eye on that. And that was, like I say, we rammed up into this area in here um, a couple of weeks ago. So uh, that target was fulfilled, as I mentioned. And I said I wanted to see price trade softer from there. We had a, a big sell-off and then a two-day purge on, that was uh, Wednesday, Thursday of last week. And you see the big sell-off on Friday, which was finally the one that uh, pushed cable above those old highs right there, which we all knew that they were going to run. And then we saw them, uh, now we're starting to see it sell off a little bit more. Uh, I like this. I, I'd like to see them get lower. If we do see price go lower than here, then like I say, that's going to give us the green light to start trading cable longer, or trading cable higher. Uh, so keep your eye on this pair here going forward, okay? Because this will be the signal. Uh, US CAD, we again hit the target I was looking for. I was looking for this gap fill on the daily from early March. When was that gap? Yeah, March 6th. <clears throat> we finally got that filled last week. Uh, and actually, and like I said, and price actually went down a little bit further than what I had anticipated as well, too, on Friday. So nice, nice sell-off on uh, on US CAD. Uh, they sold it here, rebalanced in here, and hopefully that would have been your green light to sell, and then price uh, fell off again. So nice run down last week. Now, again, if we do see a little bit of pullback higher on US dollar, then that would obviously allow US CAD to start trading a bit higher. Uh, but just be careful with this one here. This one looks fairly bearish. So, uh, you know, there's a very good chance that we may not trade higher on US CAD. Uh, same as uh, GBP USD, uh, same type of idea. If, if we stay above this area he, uh, here on GBP USD, I think we're going to see higher prices. Um, same thing but reverse on US CAD. I think if we stay above this area in here on US, excuse me, stay below this area on US CAD, and there's a real good chance we could see price continue to the downside. Um, and, I'll, you know, you'll just have to look back in here for p possible targets. But we'll worry about that next week. Uh, so, again, just want to see sort of how things are looking here going into Monday, Tuesday. But I believe that we're going to see uh, some movement. And, again, you know, Wednesday, I think, of this week is really going to be the, the telltale sign um, as we're coming into those FM, uh, FOMC statements. Um, and then, you know, if U.S. dollar by Wednesday fails to get anywhere in this area in here, then I think it's a lock short for the rest of the month of June. And, you know, we're going to be in down into here. Uh, but if we start trading higher and that FOMC stuff does nothing to roll price over, then I think we're possibly going to see price trading higher in here. But it could take, a, I, I honestly believe the numbers, it, it could take a couple more months. Uh, you know, as I said, US is starting to come out of the lockdown but it's going to take a little while for those numbers to generate and the economy to get going again. And so I, I, I personally believe we're going to see some weaker prices. Again, one last time, I'd like to see them pull it up into here first before they roll it over, um, just to allow some people to get short and, you know, whoever is gone short, you know, that run some stops and then pair some orders up and then get short again. That would be the ideal situation. Uh, whether we get that or not, I guess, like I say, we'll have to see. So uh, finally, on the Forex side, Aussie. Uh, again, hit that area that I was looking at. I was looking for this high here uh, to get run out. It hit that early last week. Uh, I think that was, uh, what was that, Friday, Thursday? It hit that Wednesday of last week and just um, kept going higher from there. Beautiful price action on Aussie. I hope you guys have been trading Aussie because this technically um, has just been beautiful to trade. And, um, you know, possible up more con uh, continuation upside um, 
you know, lots of targets to look at, right? We've got this high here. We've got this high here. And I'm not going to go through them all, obviously. Uh, but just keep looking back, you know, lots of levels and lots of targets to pick from. If we see continuation lower on U.S. dollar, I think Aussies is going to be a beaut to trade uh, and, and, and stay higher. And I, I believe, now this is another pair where I'd love to see them come back down and rebalance and, you know, possibly come down, you know, rebalance around here and, uh, you know, or even off of this high here. Just come down and sweep below these lows here from midweek last week rebalance and then start running back higher again that would be um, the ultimate and I'm actually going to put that on here and see if we get something like that this week because this in my mind would be a beautiful setup for a long-term swing trade so keep your eye on Aussie uh, for next week uh, that's it for Forex I'm just going to cover one more market here the crude oil market uh, because it went right up into that gap that I was telling you guys about absolutely no hesitation I really was hoping for a rebalance lower and then a run up uh, into this gap that would have been in my opinion um, much stronger of a run but um, a trend but you know what nonetheless I uh, I was correct on crude oil uh, we we're almost filling the gap here watch the low of this candle here from uh, March 6th and the close uh, of March 6th watch that area I'm thinking we're probably going to see that here Monday Tuesday or Tuesday where we go from there um, you know <laughs> A lot of sentiment there's a lot of production cuts there's a lot of deals being made and uh i think there's a lot of people you know they're pretty sick and tired of seeing oil uh tanking so they're they're in a big hurry to get this thing higher uh like i say production cuts and the whole bit so um we're probably going to see higher prices but uh, i'm certainly not buying it here like i know you guys could probably say you know you're crazy what are you talking about this is obviously long and i know it's going to go higher and it's going to go um further up uh, I'm going to be watching this area this week to see how much further because then I think uh, the, the next area would be the lows of that candle there that I'd be looking at for a possible target. Uh, but then from there, do we just keep on pushing higher or do we start to see a bit of a correction and a pullback and a rebalance lower? Um, that's what I'm waiting for. And it's it's these moves here. I'm not worried about missing these moves. And I hope you guys aren't either because price always comes back and to give us another entry uh, to get back into the market. So I'm never worried about that. Um, what would that look like? Possibly a return back down here, possibly a return back down to this consolidation level, or even possibly back down here. So I'm certainly not missing this move. And I think the next move uh, down and bounce, I think it's going to be much more powerful than this move here. And that's where the opportunity is going to um, um, reside. So that's what I'm looking for on oil. I hope I'm right. <laughs> Uh, you know, if I'm wrong, that's why we have this, this the uh, disclaimers. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for on crude oil. So uh, that's all I'm going to talk about this week, guys. I'm going to wrap this up, keep it nice and short and sweet for you. And uh, for all of our members, obviously, we will see you in the chat room tomorrow. And for everybody else, we'll catch you in the next um, recording for uh, next Sunday. Hope you guys have a great week trading. We'll talk to you soon.